There's been a lot in the news just lately, hasn't there, about people being woke. We've suddenly woke up to the fact that people did terrible things and then things get cancelled or people get cancelled. Uh, I was reminded of this particularly because just last week there was a story about somebody going into Broadcasting House, the headquarters of the BBC, with a hammer and, and defacing some of the wonderful sculptors that are in there. I've stood and admired them many times when I've been in BH and they are absolutely wonderful. If you've never seen them, Google them. They're just absolutely lovely to look at. And we found out that the guy that did them turned out to be a paedophile and he abused children. Now, I'm not condoning what he did in a million years. But does what he did actually make us look at those paintings or sculptures or any of those things in a different way? I don't think it does personally. And then, of course, there's Edward Colston down in Bristol did some amazing things for the city of Bristol. In fact, so much so that the collection they had, I think, paid for that statue that was recently toppled because he was involved in the slave trade. Again, I'm not condoning that in any way, shape or form. You know, it was what it was and I'm very sorry for what happened and had I been around at the time, I hope I would have been on the side of people saying that it was a bad thing to do, but I wasn't and it did. But you know, it made me think too about forgiveness and the fact that in the Bible we're told that God does forgive us if we ask for his forgiveness. I was reminded of Mary Magdalene, that lovely story. You remember she was taken in adultery. I mean, actually taken in the act of adultery. <laughs> you don't get much clear cut than that, do you really? And yet, and yet, she's brought before Jesus whom they all expect her to condemn. Oh, you know, what are you gonna do with this woman? They're poking fingers all over the place. And what does Jesus do? Well, he doodles in the sand, doesn't he? He just bends down and writes in the sand. And he says, OK, if you've never sinned, feel free to chuck a brick at her. Well, words to that effect. And what happened? Nobody did because they all thought about the things that they had done that were wrong. And so they didn't do it. And then there's David, for goodness sake, one of my favourite characters in the, in the whole Bible almost. What a wonderful man he was, the youngest of a family. He was anointed. I mean, how, how is that? He was anointed by God. He was chosen and he was a king. And what did he do? He spied a woman halfway across the city who he fancied. Let's be honest, there's no other word for it. And he desired to have his wicked way with her. But there was one slight fly in the ointment. She was married. So he sent her husband off to war, knowing that he would get killed so that he could have his wicked way with her. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who's done anything as wicked as that. And yet, and yet, God forgave him. And look at what he went on to do. I mean, you've only got to read some of those Psalms to realise what a fantastic relationship God had with David. Isn't it amazing? So let's think about a couple of texts from the Bible, isn't it? In Romans, where we're told, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that's you and me. There ain't any exceptions. And the other one I suppose that we should think about is that we need to have forgiveness for all that we've ever done. All that we've done in our lives, we need to ask for forgiveness. Now, we need to be a little bit careful, don't we, when we presume things and presume to play God. Let him do the judgment. And just remember, for every finger that we point out at somebody accusing them, there's three fingers pointing back at ourselves. Worth remembering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us and we pray that we may have been your representative in the world today, your hands, your feet, your voice, your bank balance, that we may have done what you have asked us to do. And we ask your forgiveness for anything we've done that has marred your image in us. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, wherever they are, now and forever. Amen.